Hey everyone and welcome! Today's video is a beginner guide for Blood Hunt and I have summed up everything you need to know about the game loop as a new player and also added some helpful tips to make your start a bit easier. The video is parted into chapters as usual, so if you are only looking for a specific information, feel free to skip forward. When starting into the game, you find yourself in the so-called Elysium, a waiting room made like a cathedral where you spend time before getting into a match. It's also the place where you will find NPCs later on with which you can talk to dive deeper into the lore of the game and you can also interact with other players. So it's a bit like a social hub. And it's also the place where you choose your game mode, solo or squads, start matchmaking or customize your character. When a match was found, the first thing you do is to choose your spawn point on the map. There's no plane, no parachute, no jumping, nothing. You simply pick a location and within a small radius you can see if other players will be spawning nearby. If you play in squad mode, each of the members will pick a spawn point separately. There won't be one spawn point for the whole squad and it's up to you if you start close to each other or spread out more. Within the countdown you can change locations as much as you want, so if you choose one with a lot of enemies around you, you can still pick another one. If you don't choose a position at all, a random spot will be assigned to you. At the end of the countdown, the position of every of the 45 players gets revealed on the map to give you an overview of potential hotspots and the number of players close to you. What you can also see on the map right from the start are the locations of pharmacy and weapon stores where you can find good loot and the locations of the entity, but more about that later. There are also high tier loot areas marked on the map that change from round to round and provide more and better weapons but will also be more crowded with opponents. After the location you pick one of the archetypes that come with different passive and active abilities. A more detailed video about all of them will be coming in the next days cause it would be simply too much to include all of them and their abilities in this guide. There's definitely one archetype for every playstyle, so at the beginning the best thing is to try all of them and see which one works for you. It's hard to give a general recommendation here. One of my favorite classes is the Saboteur who can set gas traps and has a shadow dash where he banishes for a few seconds and moves faster, so it's a bit of a tactical and more defensive class. But there's also classes with more aggressive skills like the Brood or the Vandal who can do a shockwave punch and a powerful jump to evade from enemy fire. If you're not happy with the look of your archetype, you can customize them from head to toe with different hairstyles, skin tones, clothes, piercings and cosmetics in the main menu while you are in the Elysium. When the match starts, you spawn at your chosen location on the streets of Prague and the first thing you should do is to scan your surroundings for loot locations by pressing X. There are different locations on the ground and on the rooftops where you will find weapons, gadgets, armor and health. The normal loot locations where items can be picked up from the ground appear with a blue glowing fog. By scanning your surroundings you can see them through walls and on rooftops. Another main location for weapons, armor and health are the different vans. There are orange ones that can be filled with either of the item types, police vans where you will only find weapons, armor or ammunition, and ambulances where you can only pick up blood bags or syringes. You can carry up to three pieces of each health and armor type in your inventory, so be sure to fill it up whenever you can. In addition, there are also the aforementioned weapon and pharmacy stores where you can either find health, melee or ranged weapons. But be careful, cause when you are the first one to enter one of these, an alarm gets activated that every enemy around you will hear. And if they are more experienced and aware of their surroundings, they might come over and check what's going on. But that's also something you can do, of course. If you hear an alarm nearby, check your map for stores and maybe take a look. More loot is also available in treasure chests that you can find on set locations across the map and that always spawn at the same place. So if you know where they are, check them out, but beware of other players that might be faster than you or try to ambush you. In these chests you will find higher tier weapons either in purple or yellow. At the normal loot locations and vents you will hardly find better weapons than blue ones. The rarity system in Blood Hunt is similar to other battle royale games with common weapons in green, rare in blue, epic in purple and legendary in yellow. The higher the rarity, the better the weapons and there are different parameters for each weapon that get affected by higher tiers. You can find more info about that in the journal tab of the main menu. The weapons that can be found are either melee or ranged and similar to other games with shotguns, pistols, assault rifles, MPs, marksmen, sniper rifles or gas grenade launchers. And clubs and swords as melee weapons that you shouldn't underestimate as they deal good damage and you can even block bullets with some of them. 
Armor is also an important part of the game, but is a bit rare especially during the end of a match. Simply pick it up and equip it to gain a little more resistance against enemy fire. Once you receive the damage, you have to heal yourself up manually by using blood bags or syringes. Blood bags regenerate more health, but it takes longer to use them, while syringes only regenerate a small amount of health, but only need a short moment to use them. To get access to the consumables, you can either get into the inventory with tap or hold down the consumable key to open a wheel and select the one you need. Another way to refill your health bar is by feeding on humans down on the streets. That's pretty effective as it will fill up your complete bar, but also takes time, so it's not very useful during combat. When out of combat, this should be your preferred way of regaining health. And that takes me to the next point, resonances. By scanning your surroundings, you can see humans with different colored auras. These are humans with resonant blood. Bloodhunt has a perk system called Resonances that allows you to buff different parameters like more melee damage or faster cooldown for your abilities. So when feeding on these humans, you will receive one of four resonances for the match depending on the color of the aura. Each resonance type can be upgraded in three levels, but you only have three slots in total at least at the beginning of a match. How you fill these slots is up to you. You can either fill all three slots on one resonance type and get the maximum boost for this, or you fill one or two slots on different types. This can have a great advantage to your playstyle if you are able to find mortals with the right blood. In addition, feeding on these humans also regenerates your health. During the match you can unlock four more resonance slots, so you will have seven slots in total, by diablerizing downed opponents. Diablerizing can be done with other vampires when you have downed them and you should definitely do this. Cause no matter if you play solo or squad mode, enemies will always be downed and not immediately killed. So you either have to finish them with a weapon or diablerize them with a short animation. That does not only grant you access to another resonance slot, but also completely fills up your health bar. So if you have the time to do it, you should. If you don't do this or if you don't finish them because you're getting attacked by another player already, the downed opponent will be automatically revived after 20 seconds and you might have to face them again at a later time. That also means if you are downed and your opponent is not finishing you, you will get a second chance. You will be revived with a little health, but better than nothing. If you're lucky, you can escape from the scene and regain health for another fight. Note that the regeneration will stop if you are in the red gas, so crawling out of bounds and regenerating won't work. If you get downed while out of bounds, you need to crawl back into the zone to start regenerating. Another big part of the game is the so-called blood hunt. A blood hunt is started when one of the players breaks the mask rate. This is a set of rules created by one of the vampire sects to ensure that the existence of vampires remains a secret towards humanity. It includes not getting caught while sucking blood or shooting at humans. So if you are not careful with gunfights on the streets or you get caught while feeding on a mortal, you will get revealed on everyone's map for 60 seconds and will also be visible to other players with a red outline that can be seen across the whole map and even through walls. So it's like a bounty hunt, but the target is not randomly chosen or set by picking up a contract. You start the blood hunt by yourself, either accidentally or on purpose. To get away with it, you either have to run, jump and climb quickly through the town and avoid other players, or you get into gunfights and kill the attackers. If you prefer a more aggressive playstyle, the blood hunt can be a good way of focusing players on you without having to find them. They are simply coming to you and deliver free loot if you win the fights. The same the other way around. If a careless player starts a blood hunt, it's always worth to take a look and eliminate either the careless player or some others around to get rid of a few opponents. And last but not least, there's a few words about the PvE part of the game. As I mentioned already, you can see the locations of the so-called entity on the map that are marked with this red cross symbol. These are squads of three or four heavily armed soldiers of a secret society that is trying to eliminate all vampires. They can be found at different locations all over the map and guard good loot. When you get closer to them, they will start to attack you and you shouldn't get into a fight with them carelessly. First of all, because they have high firepower and second, because the gunfire might alert nearby enemies as they can scan the shots with their vampire senses as well. But if you feel confident enough to attack the entity, you might get rewarded with some good weapons and armor. In addition, you can also diablerize the guards of the entity to unlock more resonance slots. But you have to be quick, cause you need to down all of them first to make sure they won't kill you and then diablerize them before they bleed out. It's a bit tricky, but if you make it, you will have 4 more resonance slots unlocked within no time. And that's it for today. I hope this video helps you to get started in Blood Hunt and if it does, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned. Until then, thanks for watching, I'm the Catwoman and you are awesome.